Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Al-Aqibatu Lil-Muttaqeen Wala Udwana Illa Ala Zalimeen Allahumma Salli Ala Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Ajma'een Wa Man Tamasaka Bisunnatihi Ila Yawmiddin Thumma Amma Ba'd Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Ala Ni'mat Al-Islami Wa Sunnah all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. We welcome you back to another episode of Everyday Sunnah. In today's episode, we want to focus in on a very important question, a question that is often asked and much debated, unfortunately. But it's a question that the proofs and the evidences are clear as relates to it. Bithnilahi ta'ala, we want to just look at some of the proofs and the evidences that come inside of the Quran as relates to this particular topic. Now, I want you to know that there are a number of proofs and evidences that are found in the Sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But perhaps we'll save that into another discussion, into another time. Bismillahi ta'ala, and we'll focus in on some of the proofs and evidences that are mentioned inside. Of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what is this question what is this question that we're talking about that is often asked and much debated that question is ain't Allah where is Allah it is very important as Muslims that we know our our aqidah our creed based upon proofs and evidences not based upon he say she say not based upon speculative reasoning and or deduction but rather based upon proofs and evidences that could be found inside of the Book of Allah, found inside of the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as understood by the Sahaba and those who follow them in good. This is our way. As Muslims, this is our way. We are not a people who take a belief and then look for proofs and evidences, but we are a people who we base our beliefs on the proofs and evidences as correctly understood and how is that illustrated? How do we know what is the correct understanding? That it is the understanding that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they had based upon that in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he taught them from the book and from the Sunnah. So we know their way was the correct way. And we know that they are the best of mankind. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was asked who are the best of mankind, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Khairun Nas. That the best of mankind, then they are my generation. Now, the best of mankind, meaning the best of mankind after the prophets and the messengers. The best of mankind, again, meaning after the prophets and the messengers. So the best of mankind after the prophets and after the messengers, then verily, undoubtedly, they are as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. They are my generation, meaning the Sahaba. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. These are the praiseworthy generations and those generations who are upon khair. In any event, if we want to be upon this good, then we have to follow them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands us to do so inside of the Quran. Allah ta'ala, he says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِنِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبِعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ and those who came first and foremost from the Muhajirun, from those who migrated from Mecca to al Medina, and from the Ansar, from those occupants of Medina that helped their brothers and sisters who migrated unto them. And then Allah Ta'ala, he says, and those who follow them, and those who follow them in good, that Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. In any event, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala here in this ayah that can be found in Surah at tawbah he commands us to follow the way of the Sahaba and to be upon their way. Likewise, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commanded us to do this inside of the famous hadith, the hadith of Irbad bin Sariya, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا And whoever lives from amongst you, then they're going to see much differing. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي 
وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين من بعدي عدوا عليها بالنواجذ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, يعني, and to the end of the hadith, as there some more of the hadith that remains, but the point of reference here is the point that was mentioned. And that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whoever shall live after you, then whoever shall live from amongst you after me, then they will see much differing. Much differing. Where is this differing? Is it differing as, as relates to the uh, weight of particular items as they are found inside of the marketplace? Is it a differing as it relates to any affair that is linked to the affairs of the dunya? No, a differing as it relates to the deen. Individuals saying that this thing is from the deen and it's not from the deen. Other ones saying that this thing is from the sunnah and it's not from the sunnah. So how do we understand when the people start to differ as it relates to their religion, when they start to differ as it relates to their understanding of the book and the sunnah, what is our frame of reference and what is the remedy for such an ailment? Then undoubtedly that is to return things back to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as understood by who? As understood by the sahaba because their understanding was correct. What was the deen that day? Then that is the deen today. And what wasn't the deen on that day, then that is not the deen today. So it is incumbent that we base our understandings on their understanding. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, so it is upon you to follow my sunnah. And the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa, the rightly guided khulafa or khalifas after me. Namely, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhum ajma'een. And we understand from this what enters into it, what generally is, is, is who is the sahaba. Although these are the ones that were specifically mentioned in general, we understand from it that it means what their way, first and foremost, the uh, rightly guided khulafa and the sahaba in general, and the sahaba in general, that we are to stick to their way uh, as their way was the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as can, as, as can be grammatically seen and illustrated from this construction, which inshallah ta'ala, perhaps another time we'll get into it uh, uh, as we have already dealt with it before in the past. But in any event, so as to not be longer than what is needed and necessary, we'll save that to another time. In any event, it is clear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, so is upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa. So we have to stick to their way and understand as they understood because they learned directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So anyone who claims that they have a superior understanding then those who learn one directly from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then two, those who subsequently taught the following generation what they had learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there is nothing from the deen of Al-Islam that we are upon and that has reached us except by way of the Sahaba that they taught the next generation who then went on to teach in that next generation and so on and so forth until it has reached us today. So their beliefs are known and it's clear and there's only one way. They're not a multitudes of ways that lead to the truth, but there's only one way that leads to the truth. There's only one proper way to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's only one proper way to believe in those things in which we are commanded to believe in. And that is, it has to be based upon the Quran, based upon the sunnah, based upon the understanding of the sahaba. In any event, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book, he makes it very clear to us where he is. So there is no ambiguity. There is no reason for us to speculate and to ponder on the answer to this question, Ain Allah, where is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book, he says, Ar-Rahmanu ala al-arush istawa, that the most beneficent he is above his throne. The most beneficent, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is above his throne. So Allah ta'ala, he makes it very clear that he is above his throne. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being above his throne is something that is well known. Allah ta'ala, elsewhere in the Quran, he says, ثم استوى على العرش. And then he rose above his throne. So the fact that Allah ta'ala is above his throne is something that is well known. As Imam Malik, radiyallahu ta'ala, anhu wa rahimahullahu ta'ala, as he had mentioned that the istiwa 
the fact that Allah Ta'ala is above his throne, ma'noom, this is well known. Well, kayf majhul. But how he's above his throne, we don't know. Because Allah Ta'ala, he did not tell us that. Allah Ta'ala, he told us where he was. But Allah Ta'ala did not dis yani give to us a description that will outline and define how he is above his throne. But as we know, he's above his throne in a manner that is befitting his majesty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that he's above his throne. But how? The kayf is majhul. And then Imam Maliki said, What's su'al anhu bid'ah? And to ask about it is innovation. Because this was not something that you will find the sahaba asking about. The fact that the Prophet sallam had explained to us that Allah ta'ala is above his throne. The fact that Allah ta'ala inside of his book says in the clearest of terms that he is above his throne. Khalas, that's it for the believer. Our way is sami'na wa apa'na. We hear, we obey. Allah Ta'ala says he's above his throne. He's above his throne. Who then therefore in their right mind will debate with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as relates to where Allah is when Allah Ta'ala has told us where he is. And that is he's above his throne. Allah Ta'ala says, And then he rose above his throne. Now I know I said that we wasn't going to mention any proofs and evidences from the, from the, the sunnah. But just as a side note, I want to mention one. I want to mention one bithnilahi ta'ala in a very brief and abridged manner. And that is the famous hadith where the Prophet sallam, he asked the slave girl, where is Allah? And she had mentioned and she answered by saying, Fissama, that he is above the heavens. That he is above the heavens. Naam. And then the Prophet sallam, he asked her who he was. And she said that he was the messenger of Allah. And then, with, then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asking these two questions, use that to determine whether or not she was a true believer. And then, once he had heard her answers, where well, she said, "Allah is above the heavens," naam, and she said that you are the messenger of Allah. He said, "Atiqha fa inna ha mu'mina aw kama qal al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." He said, "Free her, emancipate her, because verily she is a believing woman." Now, because she's a believing woman. So the Prophet I said, I'm utilize these two questions to, to affirm and to establish what? The fact that she was a believing woman. And the reason why I went quickly to this, because it illustrates two things. One, it illustrates the fact that this was the understanding of the companions, that Allah Ta'ala, he's above the heavens, he's above his throne. Now, as Allah Ta'ala tells us inside of his book, but this is one. Two, it also shows us the permissibility of asking this question because you have some people who they will say it is not permissible to even ask this question. Ma'am, it is not permissible to even ask this question. Subhanallah, how misguided are these individuals? When we have a clear hadith where the Prophet وسلم, himself asked this question, ain't Allah, where is Allah? And the answer came from the slave girl above the Above the heavens, Nam, and then the Prophet Sallam he affirmed that Nam, this is correct. What she said was right. So, being that we see the permissibility of asking the question, and being that we see the proper answer that was given, and what that proper answer is, how can one challenge and one say that you cannot ask the question, Nam, and how can one then therefore bring forth an erroneous answer, an erroneous interpretation? A wrong answer to this question where we have a clear question being asked and we have a clear answer being given now so the guidance is clear it is no need for us to try to guess there's no need for us to try to yeah any try to figure it out on our own there's no need for us to do any of, the, any of these things because the answer it is it is clear the answer it is clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is above his throne he is above the heavens he's above his throne this verse and verses like this come many places in the quran which shows us the fact that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most high now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most high anyone who is in line with their fitrah then they will understand this that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most high yeah subhanallah even the disbelievers, even the disbelievers, their fitrah acknowledges the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the most high. So you find individuals, even from amongst the disbelieving people, when they call upon Allah, their gaze is towards the heavens. Their gaze is up. No one calls upon Allah and they're looking down. No one calls upon Allah and looking under the bed. No one calls upon Allah and looking under the dresser. No. 
But when we call upon Allah, the fitra knows Allah Ta'ala, He is the most high. And this is what most befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, Allah Ta'ala, who is the irresistible, the supreme. Allah Ta'ala, He says, And that He is the irresistible, the supreme one who is above who? Who is above His servants, who is above His slaves. Allah Ta'ala, He says this in the Quran as it can be found in Surah and Am. And it's verse 18. This in the Quran and Surah and Am in his verse, what 18? And the aforementioned verse, the aforementioned verses, Naam, where Allah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and then he rose above his throne. This is mentioned in a number of places in the Quran. From them, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 54, Surah Yunus, verse 3. Surah Al-Ra'at, verse 2. Surah Al-Furqan, verse 59. So again, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 54. Surah Yunus, verse 3. Surah Al-Ra'at, verse 2. Surah Al-Furqan, verse 9. And in other places from the uh, Quran as well. Now, as relates to the first verse that was mentioned, Ar-Rahman al arush istawa that this can be found in Surah Taha and is verse number five. In any event, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these ayat, in these verses of the, from the Quran, makes it very clear where he is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Surah an nahl and it's verse number 50. Allah Ta'ala, he says, That they fear their Lord from above them. And they do that which they are commanded to do. The point of reference here is Allah Ta'ala's statement. They fear their Lord who is who? Above them. Who was above them. Naam. There's another indication of the loftiness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that he is above, he is above the above the heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, that glory, the name of your Lord, the most high. And this can be found in Surah Al A'la. This can be found in Surah Al A'la, verse number one. So here we have another indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the, the most high. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the, the most high. Allah ta'ala. He said in his, no, in his noble book in Surah Al-Fatir. In Surah Al-Fatir. And this is in verse number 10. Now, Allah Ta'ala, he says here, Surah Al-Fatir, verse 10. Surah Al-Fatir, verse 10. Allah Ta'ala, he says, إِلَيْهِ يَسْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمِنُ الصَّالِحِ يَرُفَعُهُ Allah Ta'ala, he says that, and, and to him ascends. Yasadu al Kalim Tayyib and unto him, unto Allah, there ascends, there goes up, there goes up unto Allah, the goodly word, and their righteous good deeds, they go up. Ya rufa'uhu. The righteous good deeds go up, they ascend unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, all of this language points us to the fact that what that the kalima at tayyib, it what yasadu, it goes up. Naam. Well, what do they do? They go up unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this here shows us clear that Allah ta'ala is above the heavens. He is above his throne. Now, these are just some of the proofs and the evidences. So it's not to be too long. We'll just suffice us. We'll suffice. we will suffice with that which was mentioned now allah ta'ala he is above the heavens all of the verses that was mentioned did you get any indication from that that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everywhere did you get any indication from any of those verses that were mentioned 
from the answer of the slave girl, did you get any indication that Allah is everywhere? Well, the answer is no, you did not. Because Allah himself, yani be that he, Allah Ta'ala himself is not everywhere. For he is as he described himself as being. He is above his throne. He is above the heavens. He is separate from his creation. He is not a part of the creation. Now, the knowledge of Allah. is Does the knowledge of Allah reach every place? Of course. Allah's sight. Does Allah's sight reach every place? Of course. Allah's hearing. Does Allah's hearing reach every place? Of course. If I were to ask that another way, is there anywhere in the universe that Allah can't see that's hidden from Allah? Of course not. Everything is known and seen by Allah, the, that which is apparent and that which is unapparent. Now, nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I were to ask you, is there anywhere in the universe that Allah can't hear what's going on there? Of course the answer is no. Subhanallah, of course the answer is no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hears everything. No matter where it is, Allah Ta'ala, he hears what's going on there. So on and so forth. Now, Allah's knowledge is there anywhere in the heavens and the earth that Allah, and anywhere in the universe, that Allah doesn't know about what's going on there? Of course not. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he is all-knowing. There's, there's not a place except that his knowledge, and it, it reaches, it doesn't go yani, beyond his knowledge. Allah Ta'ala, he knows everything. So there's nothing that is hidden from Allah, not hidden from his yani, um, knowledge, not hidden from his sight, not hidden from his hearing, but Allah hears, he hears everything, he sees everything, he knows everything. Now, so, so the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be above his throne, could be above the heavens, above the throne, outside of creation, yet he is with us wherever we are. Yet he is with us wherever we are. If there are two people that's there, Allah ta'ala is the third because he hears and he sees what's going on. Now, he knows what's going on. Allah Ta'ala is closer to us than our jugular vein. Allah Ta'ala, he knows what we show and what we hide. Allah Ta'ala, if, 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 if we're here in our country, Allah Ta'ala, he sees where we are. If we're somewhere else, all the way across the, on the other side of the world, Allah Ta'ala, he hears and he sees where we are. Allah Ta'ala knows where we are. So we can never escape Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, we can never escape Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But with this being the case, does this necessitate that Allah Ta'ala has to physically be in that place? Of course not. Of course not. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala, he is greater than that which they ascribe unto him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But where is Allah? Yani be that Where is Allah himself? Is as he has described. Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa. The most beneficent, he is above the throne. The most beneficent, he is above the throne. And the throne is where? Above the heavens. And Allah Ta'ala is above the throne. Outside of what? Outside of the creation. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, he is not a part of the creation. But he is separate from the creation. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. This is just some of the proofs and the evidences that point to this fact. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the most high. He is above the heavens, above his throne, separate from creation. Ila liqa. Until next time we meet. Estawdirukumullah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.